Hey guys, welcome to Irish Medieval History. And this week, I just want to cover this never ending myth that the Irish are poor because they walk around barefoot. Yeah, and it's just a myth that keeps reasserting itself over and over and over again from a very modern perspective. And although I tell people stop looking at medieval history or even history from general from your, your modern perspective, people seem to keep doing it. They look at photos and straight away the first thing that alarms them is they're not wearing any shoes. Why are they not wearing any shoes? And therefore, people come to a very quick conclusion that, well, they're not wearing any shoes because they're poor. And you get one photo up, one photo up online from the mod medieval period all the way up to the modern period of 1962, and people alarmingly go, them poor, poor Irish people, look how poor they are. They don't have any shoes on. Clearly these ignorant poor people. And you're like, they have a leather bag. They're walking around with a leather bag. How are they poor? Like that dress alone, somebody would have had to go get the resources or pay somebody to put that together. Look how fine stitch that is. You know, they, even the fact that that person would have a, and like most people would have been judged by the cloak um, at that, boy, that stage known as a shawl. Uh, by 1962 so the idea that these people are poor they're far from it you know these people work very hard they work with their hands most of the time but the, the main thing I'm trying to highlight here is that these people are very active and therefore they go around barefoot because Ireland is a very boggy area let me reframe that in another way what you have is them wearing shoes in an urban area and then when they're out in the countryside they don't wear shoes and the reason the way they don't wear shoes out in the countryside is because it's boggy and the terrain is more tough and you'd find that their shoes of that period would just just tear the crap out of their um, feet that you would tear up their feet so therefore people would avoid wearing shoes until they went into more urban areas and then they would wear shoes. And don't get me wrong, just like people are doing today, they do judge each other by their shoes. We know by the fines that people put a lot of detail into shoes of that period. And we find a lot of shoes. There's no, like, people are not poor. They're not missing shoes. They just, when they go into the countryside, if you were to wear those fine shoes, not only is it really tough on your feet because they're uncomfortable of the period, you would also ruin your shoes with the bog and the dirt, you know? So as we gradually over time, and as the car, mostly the car gets more and more roads become more popular and you have more tarmac roads, people start to adapt to more shoes. Because like if you're out in the boggy side, you don't really have any use having shoes on because the ground is so soft and so good to your feet and still is today. Uh, Rambling Kern has made a video and he highlights this, you know, I can't remember if it's in the video itself or whatever, uh, but he does say that he actually found on the boggy ground, it was really comfortable for him to walk around bare feet. Okay. So not only do we have fines, but we also have it in literature. Uh, one of the most famous people on this is Magnus Barefoot, who went around Ireland barefooted because of the tough terrain. He took his shoes off and would walk around barefoot uh, the kerns alone, people naturally assume, they naturally jump over and assume that the kerns, the Irish warriors, are poor and unwealthy because they're walking around with no shoes on. That's not the case. Kerns actually came from more of the higher classes of people and it was uh, the fact that they had plenty of resources to go full-time military, you know. If you don't have resources, you can't go full-time military. And the people who didn't, who couldn't go full-time military uh, would be the likes of the Bon Octas and stuff that would have to do it part-time. They would have to go military service and also run the farms and stuff as well. You know, compared to the Kerns, Kerns don't have to run farms, you know. So keep that in mind. Although the Kerns run around barefoot most of the time, it's the same thing with the Fenian earlier on in Fenian literature. Also run around barefoot. 
Uh, we can see that with the Book of Kells. You know, these are full-time warriors, but they're running around um, when they're out in the countryside with no feet on because why would they wreck up their shoes? And uh, it's just people... Okay, let me move on a wee bit. So after 1962, why did they start wearing shoes more? Uh, as I've answered it partly, it's because of the development of roads. It's also the development of shoes. The shoes become more comfortable and they become, as we call them in Ireland, runners. In the States, I think they're called sneakers. Um, you have to correct me below. But regardless, my point is, is that you get more comfortable shoes, you know? However, that's not all a plus side. The downside of that is that you're cramping your feet up now. And it's very unnatural to be running around with no wish. Uh, shoes on your feet or anything that cramps your feet up we have we have now gone from a race of people in a very short time that used to be able to give our feet plenty of breathing space to grow out to now having these cramped small little crushed feet that are very unhealthy and we're no longer able to run as quickly as we could before we're no longer able to adapt our feet to different situations some people can't even walk out in the countryside because their feet are always hurting. They're unconditioned to the more tougher terrain that's out there. You know, uh, people would say, oh, but what happens if we rub, it, rub their feet against nettles and stuff? People's feet were used to. They were more harder, more tougher. Now we've got these soft, little, delicate, crushed up feet that can't even breathe. You know, they would say that um, these days, oh, my feet are cold. People back then, their feet didn't get cold. Their feet could breathe because they would put the correct warm kit on. Um, in the last few months since I moved to Okinawa, I haven't put on shoes for the last two years. And my feet don't get cold anymore. They regulate properly. As long as I put a coat on, um, I don't feel the cold whatsoever. My body naturally breathes. I can breathe through my head because we sweat through our head. And I can breathe through my feet. Uh, believe it or not, we sweat through our feet. So... I don't feel the cold, even in the deadest of winter, as long as I have a jacket or something around wrapped around me, I can breathe perfectly fine. Um, people in Okinawa, for the most part, just walk around in flip-flops, and it's the best thing ever. So, keep that in mind. It is strange and funny that everybody online is just running to that one conclusion, that these people are poor because they have no shoes on. Oh well, anyway, I just thought I'd do that quick little video. I am super busy this week. Not only do I have a lot of cry going on in Okinawa, as I was staying there, um, I also had my birthday yesterday. Well, hey, so wish me a happy birthday. Anyway, other than that, guys, oh, and one more thing. Um, definitely go over to the old... Oh, never mind. Anyway, other than that, guys, thanks very much, and all the best.